welcome. So I hope you appreciate the, this, this night uh, sunset on a nuclear power plant. So, a bit frightening, huh? maybe. Okay, well, this is more or less the vision I had a few years ago. The vision of nuclear I had a few years ago. To make it short, I was based in the Chernobyl atmosphere. And for me and my family, nuclear was bad, nuclear was dangerous, and nuclear was dirty. Well, and I think we all had, once in our life at least, such kind of vision of nuclear. Or even better. Like this. Well, a lot of unmanaged waste peeling up everywhere in the countryside. Well, with such a vision of nuclear, how could I go into the nuclear industry? That's a real question, because I am a convert. Originally, I am a mechanical engineer, and I worked in various fields, so automotive industry, special machines, even harvesting machines for grapes. That was really cool, by the way. And I fell into nuclear a bit by chance uh, because they wanted someone who worked in the nuclear, uh, in the automotive industry, who had done some quality and method, who spoke English and German. Well, that was my profile. I was there. That was okay. And uh, in, in fact, I must say I was a bit suspicious because, well, I, I, I had that image of nuclear. But the project I was offered to work on was simply technically too good to be refused. It was machines. I was a mechanical engineer again. I still am. Machines running for 25 years, spinning at staggering speeds, and without maintenance. So, so for a mechanical engineer, this is the holy grail, clearly. But this is not the holy grail I'm, I will talk to you today. I will tell you about another kind of holy grail, which is the fourth generation of nuclear reactors, which are also called nuclear reac uh, advanced reactors. And to be honest, I jumped also in nuclear because I wanted to make up my mind. I am an engineer and I want to understand technical topic by myself. So that's what I did. And another reason also is that I just had, it was in 2010, I just had two kids and like every young parent, I was a little bit worried about climate change. So. I will tell you about the fourth generation of nuclear, the Holy Grail, through the prism of my personal story. So first, what is a nuclear plant? This is the one you know. This is really clear and simple. Ha you have a kind of giant, uh, let's say, cooker, pressurized cooker, that heats steam that turns a turbine that activates a generator that produces electricity. Simple. And this is also known that if a nuclear power uh, rises fear, this is also one of the lowest carbon energy that we know, about 12 grams per CO2 per kilowatt hour. Even lower from the French one due to the high efficiency of uh, enrichment. So I worked from 2010 to 2017 in the nuclear industry, but at that time, 2017, the goal, even in France, was not to build new ones, new reactors. It was to dismantle some. So I quit. I, I, I left nuclear industry in 2017 to do first a nuclear master in nuclear engineering, 
specialize in this men league. Well, that was a job. Huh? <laughs> and at the same time, I did an MBA focused on renewable energy. So it was uh, on the, the title of my MBA thesis was uh, production and storage of uh, hydrogen for individuals. That was a bit technical for an MBA thesis, okay, but that was cool. And the conclusion of it was basically, okay, it could work, but only for really rich people. So that's a bit the kind of worry. It was not exactly successful. After that, I jumped in into two startups, also in the energy field. Uh, one doing, let's say, a storage uh, um, development uh, for electricity, which is key for uh, for storage for for renewable energy. Sorry, and the other one was uh, developing a nice process in order to produce hydrogen by electrolysis. It was, let's say, a, a great time, uh, but about two years. But then you realize that uh, even if hydrogen can have a role in the nuclear transi transition for sure, it requires a huge amount of electricity to produce it via electrolysis. And uh, if the storage impo is important for renewable, the most important thing is still to produce a lot of low carbon electricity. So I had the feeling somehow that I could be more useful somewhere else. And then I stepped back in nuclear when I heard about, let's say, a, a place to work on advanced reactors. But what are advanced reactors? In fact, uh, the reactors, you know, are mostly gener generation two or gener generation three. You have also some which are called generation three plus, but basically, but so between those three generation two, three, three plus, you don't have big changes. This is only small steps. The game changer coming are advanced reactors, generation four, and there is a lot of different. Uh, uh, generation 4 reactors, a lot, really a lot. The GIF, so the Gen 4 International Forum, has selected for us uh, six types of advanced reactors, and each type has a lot of subtypes in it. I will go quickly and try to get you an idea uh, what are those, uh, those reactors. I will start with the one I think is uh, less innovative. The uh, supercritical water cold reactor. So supercritical water cold reactor, as, it, as the name says it, it runs with supercritical water, which is water under really high pressure and really high temperature. Then it becomes something between liquid and gas, and it has amazing properties, to make it short. It makes that reactor particularly efficient which is really cool. This is almost, almost a fast neutron, but I will come to that no notion later. This is similar to the gener generation three reactors, so uh, PWR, pressurized water reactors, but with a lot of simplifications, which is good, of course. It has a relatively high temperature, which is also good for the industry. But this is still high pressure, so there is the same safety issues than current reactors, and cost, by the way. And as this is really high pressure in that case, particularly, it also rises the cost, because you need a really strong vessels, pipe, pumps, valves, all that. And it has a low techni technology readiness level. So not, not exactly my preferred ones. Then you have about, uh, in, uh, I put that in the same category, the HTGR and VHTR, which are, let's say, the very high temperature reactors. Some of them work with what we call triso fuel, which is a big step, because this is not exactly, uh, not at all uh, the, the fuel as we know it in roads, 
This is a fuel like particle like this. This is one millimeter only, yeah? uh, which are uh, enveloped in uh, layers of uh, oxide and production. And it's, this is put in a pebble like that. And this is helium cooled. The big advantage of that, it just cannot melt. So in, from a safety point of view, this is great. But there is a little uh, drawback, little, <laughs> not that little. With something that cannot melt, what do you do afterwards with the used pebbles? You have no real solution, in fact. So, but this is rel relatively mature and the very high temperature allow a lot of things for industries which need such high temperatures. Then, quickly on that one, a gas called fast reactor. What is important here is fast reactors. Let me explain what fast means. First, it can use as fuel the current waste of nuclear reactors. So that's, that's the first point. But also it can become a, what we call a breeder. A breeder um, how to say that? With the current uranium we extract, we use only 0.7%. Quite nothing, eh? really, really tiny amount of the uranium we extract from, the, from Earth. With fast reactors, potentially you can use 100%. So it means you multiply it just like that, the resources by a factor more than 100. To give you an idea, with the current uranium we have on the soil of France, depleted uranium mostly, we could run, we could make electricity at the same rate for thousands of years without going to the mine, which is a huge step. One limitation of that is that uh, it still has solid fuel roads. Then comes the lead cool fast reactor. Uh, by the way, there, there is uh, Mr. Stefano Buono somewhere here. And he is building <laughs> a lead cooled fast reactor, which is pretty cool. What, what the, how is it better than the previous one? So it can use waste as, uh, as fuel. OK, this is a fast reactor. It can be a breeder, so no mining anymore. This is ultra low carbon, of course, because the carbon impact of uh, nuclear today is mostly the mining. So if, so if you have no mining anymore, the carbon impact is even lower. So it goes down to 2.5 grams per, uh, of CO2 per kilowatt hour. This is huge. This is unbeatable. And a good advantage of that one is the coolant lead is also a protection for the workers around. Uh, drawbacks are, let's say, it's, this is, of course, extremely heavy, so you have to take care about the earthquakes. And still you have solid, so, solid fuel roads, uh, which okay, can be seen as a limitation. Then comes uh, the um, sodium-cooled fast reactors. So the sodium-cooled fast reactors has about the same advantages of the previous one, but this technology is really mature. It has been built several times. The bigger one has been built in France. It was called Super Phoenix. It worked quite well during a few years, and then, and then it was shut down for political reason, unfortunately. But same limitation is soli solid fuel road. Um, but we have, we have to say for that one that if we want to go fast with fast, uh, with fast reactors, sorry for the repetition, it is probably the right candidate. Then comes my preferred one, also because I'm working on it, by the way, which is the molten salt fast reactors. Fast reactors because there is a, a lot uh, of different kinds of molten salt reactors. By the way, it has been built in the 60s by the Americans, so this is not something completely unknown, but it was not a fast version. So fast version has all the advantages as before, so closed cycle, breeder, no more mining, ultra low carbon, okay, can use nuclear waste as fuel, and in this case, 
particularly efficiently. Mm. High temperature, low pressure, so no explosion, eh? cannot. And in, in addition to all that, this is load adaptive. You don't have to do anything. It just follows the load. So this is perfect uh, as complementary solution for renewables, intermittent renewables, I mean. Eh? It cannot melt. It is already melted. So it cannot melt. And in case of a leak, the salt freezes under 400 degrees and it retains all radioactivity inside. Well, this is quite a huge amount ad of advantages. Drawback, low TRL. So to, do, to develop that, we have a lot of work to do. So let's say for a demo, it's within 10 years. But some startup, and we are also, are working on it. So after that, is nuclear so frightening? So I don't think so. I think that nuclear is a good neighbor. And nuclear industry is the only industry worldwide managing its waste with such, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, strict rules and in an unorganized way. So now, I will say, guess where that picture, the next one, has been taken? In Germany. So when I say nuclear is a good neighbor, this is also the case in Germany. So that sheep is not really frightened. And my advice to everybody will be just don't believe what you heard a lot probably about nuclear. Get informed and make up your mind. Because if I can change my mind, my mind and I must say I'm a kind of stubborn, everybody can. <laughs>